Alright guys, here is the final video of this series. I hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. What's up guys? So this is going to be the last update in this video uh, for the fish import. It's been over a month now and I haven't really done a video where it's been like a long period of time, um, like over a month for one video, but I figured to do this justice, I really need to show the progress of all the tanks over the period of a month. Um, since I started, I have had three import orders. The first order has cleared quarantine. The second order um, clears tomorrow. And the third order clears in a week or so. But I want to go ahead and update everybody on how things have gone. So to get these tanks where they are now, um, I've learned that I have to do daily water changes of 25% or more. Um, basically because I am stocking these tanks heavily and there's no really plants in them to help with the nitrates. So I am doing at least a 25% change. So the upper tanks are 20 gallon longs. They all get about a 40% water change a day. The middle rack is 29 gallons and they get anywhere from 25% to um, maybe 35% a day. And I had to re do the way I do water changes because on rack system two, which is back here, it's a flow through system. So to change the water on that, I have a valve that goes right into my sump. I open the valve and the pump, instead of pumping water to the top, dumps the water straight into the sump um, to the drainage line. I uh, open that valve, let X amount of water go out, and then I can fill it back up using the drum. Now, rack system one, spin you guys around, which are all these tanks, have bulkheads in each tank. And to change the water, I just flip the valve and all the tanks drain, or well, they top off, which automatically overflows into the drain system. These tanks, because I needed to put them against the wall, are not drilled at all, which puts a lot of work on myself being that I can't do an auto water change system on this. Um, before you say anything, I can do the PVC pipe overflows. The only thing is they would be on the front of the tanks and I don't wanna see PVC pipes all over the front. I like having this row here to be able to walk up and down. And um, so I'm gonna show you how I do the water changes and um, let's check it out. All right, so first things first, this is what I came up with. It's just a PVCU. It's basically like a python hook. I have an intake sponge on it to keep any fish from being sucked up in. I hang it on the tank. And then the end of it goes into this trash can. And this trash can, they're just under $10 at Menards. And um, I think it's a really great deal. And it's actually got me thinking this summer, I might get a few of these and put these outside um, being that they're black, they'll help absorb some solar heat and um, they're quite large and for 10 bucks, it's a lot of water volume to do some ponds outdoors. So I might be doing a pond um, video with these because you can you know get a handful of these and have um, quite a water quite a bit of water volume to work with. But anyways, so I got a couple of these. I need to make more. Um, these are both the exact same length in. So on the top racks, they drain between a third and a half. Now, being that these are 29s, they don't um, drain as much. So it might drain the level down to here, but it's still about a third of the tank. So these drain about a third and these drain about half. Now I did write on the tanks what's in each tank. So uh, Ember Tetras, Blue Cobra Guppies, green neons red cobras and i keep track of deaths over the quarantine process um, each tank is labeled with the last group of imports um, i am running the full trios on every tank um, so like once the ick x has been wire changed out i can pull that coin i'm calling these coins 
Um, I can pull that coin off and know I'm still treating General Cure or Marison. Um, and that goes with all the tanks. Um, in, I'm calling this the import rack. I did keep all the boxes of the imports because they're all styrofoam line. They're really nice boxes. So instead of recycling these, I'm going to repurpose them. So any of the larger fish orders that are going out, I'm just going to reuse these boxes because I think that's more environmentally friendly than me buying more styrofoam and stuff like that. So you can see there's been quite a few import boxes here. So anybody that places a large order, you're going to get one of these boxes. Any of the small orders will be the um, priority mail um, expedited shipping boxes. So uh, let's check out this. So these are the Cardinals. And I'm sorry if this video is not that great. I can't really tell. I'm using my GoPro now to uh, try to record them. But these are the Go, uh, GoPros. These are the Cardinal Tetras. And um, these are the plants that I imported on the last order. Um, these are the Crips Spiralis. And um, so I just kind of stuck them in the sand because I want these to all convert over to submerged growth. And also I'm using it as a secondary filtration to pull nitrates out of the water. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that works. So down here, this is a, a 29, so it's got more stuff in it. It's got the Julii Cori's, the Pygmy Cori's. It's got uh, some Anubius Nana floating in it. And I also have Glow Light Tetras. And there's also um, Tiger Neurites. Everybody's kind of chilling in the back right now. Um, I know it's kind of hard to tell everything, but the Julii's are on the bottom. The Pygmy Cori's are kind of like right here. And then all the glow lights are in mid water. So here we have um, some Pilatus Cori's, which are the salt and peppers. Harlequin, Harlequin Rasboris. Check out these guppies. So these were actually shipped to me with no label on them. So I had to kind of try to figure out what strain they're from. Um, these are definitely males, but man, they are just popping. They're kind of like this dark purple, almost black midsection with this very, very um, almost pearlescent blue. But man, these guys are just fantastic looking. So if anybody knows the ID on these, these are just the males, um, please drop a comment because these things are beautiful. Because when I first got them out of the box, they had the black in the mid body, but they didn't have all this pearlescence on them. And then they finally colored up, and man, they're they're beautiful. Um, right here, you can see a rabbit snail. So I have I put rabbit snails, um, kind of spread them out through all the tanks. Um, this tank has panda cories, the neon um, blue tux guppies, and some lutea, um, also floating. So we have uh, pygmy habrosis cories, which are also known as pygmy salt and peppers. Um, I don't know where they're hiding. They like to hide under the filter. Um, rabbit snails and all the small fish are neon tetras. Up here's some pygmy uh, habrosis. They're swimming against the glass right here. Um, the neons are doing really well. Now this tank, this is a very um active tank ton of zebra danios that's what all these fish are up here and this is the first time i know i've mentioned this before first time i ever had zebra danios and i really like them they're very active um their silver just really shines and flickers when they're moving so i think these guys in a planet tank would look fantastic um the albino congo tetras are no longer in here they have been moved out because they're already sold off. Um, I had a local guy that bought all of my originals, but I do have regular Congo Tetras. Um, sorry, I just didn't label it. Um, they're all they're all chilling way there in the back. Um, I don't know if you guys can see them that well. Once again, I, I can't tell the quality of this while I'm recording, but hopefully you guys can see. Um, all the Congo Tetras are doing fantastic. Um, there's some Panda Cori's down there. So up in this tank, we have some Wendete Red 
um, floating. We have assassin snails and green neons. These green neons are all, they're always in the back. Um, they are eating the 614 fry food and they're doing really well. They're wild caught. In this tank, I got uh, moss balls. We got red cobras, males and females in there. And uh, more green neons. The green neons are in the back as well. So with the water change, I hook I hook them on. I hook the pipes onto each tank. Uh, start the suction. Super easy to do with the three quarter inch hose. They drain out into this um, trash can, and then I have a pump. This is my fresh water. This water comes directly from this tank. So I, I, I basically, this pump right now is dual purpose. So I take that pump, I put it in the barrel, and this hose discharges into my drain pipe. So I just turn that on, let it run the full time, drain all of these tanks out. Once that pump is done, and I'm done with the trash can, I move out of the way, put the pump back in this bucket, and then I flush the line out so there's no wastewater in it. So I'll, I'll flush it with five gallons of water out to the drain. Once that's done, I'm done with this setup for now. I had to get another barrel of water because this barrel up here is not enough water. It's a 55 gallon drum, but it only fills up to this level. So it's really about 40 gallons worth of water. It's not enough to change all these every single day. So when I was at Ohio Fish Rescue, I picked up this barrel and um, they just gave it to me. So this holds a full 55 gallons in, in the bottom. So I have a temperature gauge and I got this off Amazon and I've used these before, but these are not accurate. So when I first set this up, I do have a 100 watt heater in here. And when the water comes out of the tap, it's cold. So it's like 50 degrees. So I put the heater in here and after a day, this was saying it was like 60 degrees. The water up there is always like 74. So I cranked up this heater basically to full and it's only hundred watts. So I didn't think it would be enough. Well, it turns out this water was over 80 degrees with that hundred watt heater. And this thing was still reading low. And I don't know what's going on with it because if we check it, so I, I use this and this is accurate. Um, this temperature is within a degree of my TDS meter, so that's how I kind of check them is those two. But this water is 73 degrees, sorry, 73, and this is saying 70.9. So right now it's a, it's a few, well, just a couple degrees off, um, but before it was substantially off, so I don't know what's different with it now. Um, but it gives me a general rule of thumb of where the temperature's at. But before I do any water changes, I hit it with a temp gun to make sure that these waters are, are fairly close. So that's 73. Let's see what one of these tanks are. Tank 72.5. So it's within, within a degree, which is fine. Um, but there's a big sump pump. There's a half horsepower pump that's made for a house sump. It's in the bottom. I have another hook and then I hook these onto each tank and then it's on a Wi-Fi switch right now the cord just runs across the floor there's one of my Wi-Fi switches I bought new ones um, so that way I don't have to run this across I can plug it in to there's a power strip back behind the rack I activate it with my phone and I fill up every tank and I do that every single day um, something I added this year this winter is this oil filled heater I normally run the heater back there. I heat the whole room. Um, the great thing about that heater is it's a forced air, so it's got the heat coils and a blower blows air through the coils. And that really helps cut down on the moisture in the room. When that thing's running, the humidity is not too bad. I do have a humidity and temperature. Uh, it says it's 47% right now. I don't know how accurate this is. This is very old. I used it when I used to have ball pythons. But um, when that thing runs, it definitely cuts down on the humidity. Now this one's radiant heat, so it heats up the oil and then the heat just kind of rises into the room. The reason I, I got this is that one this year has been running a lot. So my electricity bill has been way higher than normal. 
Um, I really need to try to go through this room and try to insulate it as best as I can. Um, this is my garage, and the first thing I noticed was using the temp gun, I could check the floor, and then as soon as I got right by the door, it was dropping in temp. So I was having airflow come through the door. I got on Amazon and bought one of the, uh, it's like a door seal. It just has Velcro and it also comes with some screws. I did put the screws in it just because I go through this door every day. And um, now that blocks the airflow from coming in. I would like to put a seal, a secondary seal inside the door jam and um, this door as well. Um, I need to put one of the barriers on the floor and I, this goes outside. So I would like to also uh, seal that. So that kind of covers the wire changes, feeding, um, feeding at least once a day, sometimes twice. The nano fish, since they are on the fried food, I feed them for sure twice. Um, the zebra Daniels tank at the end that has the um, pandas and also the Congo tetras, those guys are just beasts when it comes to eating. So they get fed um, heavily at least once and they pretty much clear out the food before it hits the bottom. Any leftovers the panda quarries get. Um, the Julie eyes are the same way. They, they clean up the bottom very well. Um, these cardinals are clear for shipping. Um, I, I wish they were put on a little bit more size, but uh, they're doing really well. And um, so I want to kind of explain what I want to, how I want to take this route of the future of this. So the original plan was to, these 20 longs, I could fit 11 on the top and I could fit 10 29s. So after I did this, I can envision this, once it's all the same, all this airline, this was all temporary setup. This is all gonna get tucked um, underneath and out of the way. And the airlines will come up the backside. So none of these airlines will be here on the front. This is just temporary. But I really like how this is starting to look very clean. Um, I mean, obviously there's, there's stuff on the floor, so don't mind that. But if you can picture this rack with nothing on the front of it, when you walk out here, it looks very nice. It makes me wanna do this rack system and mirror it to this side. And what that would mean is getting rid of rack system one, which was the very first rack I built with the water change system. Rack system two, which is a flow through system and basically just mirroring this. And that would really increase my capacity and that would open up this area because rack system two is actually off of the wall. Um, the rack itself is the same width as this one, but it just sits off the wall. And I did that on purpose, so that way if there was any problems, I can walk behind it. So this would get pushed back further this way. It'll be one continuous rack. And what that would also allow me to do is free up space. So it'd be the same length. So if we go from right here, that rack would stop here. So that would free up all this space. And what I would love to do is get a 200 gallon vertical tank that I can use for my water. And that way I have 200 gallons on tap every single day. Because the reason I, the reason I also want to do that is I have to fill up this barrel. It drains out this pipe into the sump. And then this pump, once I'm done with my water changes, I have to pump water from here to here. Now I could take a hose directly. I'm trying not to make you guys dizzy. So here's the water splits for the washing machine and it goes up over here and then goes through a carbon block filter. So every, every bit of water that goes into this drum is pre-filtered and carbon blocked. So that way I don't have to age the water or put um, dechlor in it. So I can just constantly have water. The downside is there's no mixing valve. So it's straight cold tap water, which like I said earlier is 50 degrees during the winter. I like to get a 200 gallon tank, have this system directly feed it and then I could put a heater in that and heat up that water very quickly. But the downside again is that I would have to get rid of these rack systems. The nice thing is I can reuse all the blocks. I don't throw away the two by fours. I'll put them outside with the other ones. I can use them for future projects. 
but all the work I put into plumbing this flow through system you know that would all go away um, it's been about a year since I've done that system and you know it works well but really after doing the flow through I'd rather have the individual tanks so that way I don't have to medicate the full 250 gallons that that system is currently and um, the other negative is like all these bomb tanks have bulkheads on the front and back so I probably won't be able to reuse those or resell them the middle rack those are all bulkheaded on the rear I can cap those off and I can transfer those 20 longs up to here so that's not a problem um, and then the top racks all 10 gallons those are all bulkheaded if I could cap those and then sell those to local club members these tanks are also bulkheaded but the problem is I have them set up um, I guess long ways and the bulkheads are on the back so that's a very specific need so I doubt I'll be able to really repurpose those to other people because um, a, a lot of people put their tanks like that when they're bulkheaded but there there might be somebody locally that would want these so I'll have to post these up um, the downside is like the OG shrimp tank it's doing fantastic it's been set up for multiple years at this point and you know I'd have to tear that down and start over um, but then again I like tinkering and stuff like that so it might be a fun project it's just gonna be a lot of work so we'll see how it goes you know it's one of those things where I, I want to do it I also don't want to do it and it's gonna be Financially, I, I had to buy a bunch more tanks. The other thing I thought about doing, so this was a 20 high. I bought this on accident and didn't realize I bought a 20 high. It was supposed to be a 20 long. That was on me, but this is a salt water um, quarantine tank. So it's, it's fresh water with salt added. Um, one of the goldfish was getting sick. I tried all the different medications. It wasn't helping them, so I tried salt water as kind of like the last resort and um, unfortunately the goldfish didn't make it but that's what this tank is set up for was a dedicated quarantine for that goldfish to try to help them out but what i'm thinking about doing is using this space as a pond basically think of a frag tank so as wide as this is i haven't measured this so i don't know i think it's about five feet uh let's say five feet by three feet and doing a tank I don't know maybe 18 inches I want to build it out of fiberglass and wood basically make a wood box line it with fiberglass so it's waterproof and stick it in here and then what I want to do is instead of just dumping all this used water into the trash can and then pumping it out I want to take all the used water and have it go into this pond and using this for plants because all the water in this rack goes down to this lower rack and these are all plants and these things grow extremely fast because they're just being pumped full of nitrates this light that's under here stays on 24 hours a day and they're just booming with growth so i want to mimic that so my plan is or the idea let's not say plan but let's say idea is to water change all these tanks every day into this this would be drilled with its own sump. There's plenty of room. There's a 55 gallon. This is my blue dream tank. There's plenty of room behind it. You know, you could fit a whole nother 55, but put um, a sump back there that will actually run a line to that drain and have a float switch so automatically will um, drain off. But all the water comes from the tanks, goes into this pond. This pond would have a light on it 24 hours a day and then I can do all my plants because I can import these plants fairly cheap, but they're not to where I wanna sell them. I want them to be, um, you know, basically higher quality, more growth, etc. So I can put them all in there and let them basically power feed off the wastewater every day. That water would sit in there for a day. The plants will absorb what they can. And then the next day when um, I change the water, it would go in, and then the previous day's water would go out and drain. So that's kind of an idea I have. Um, I think it would be a fun project to make a wooden 
aquarium or wooden pond. I don't think it'd be that difficult. And I don't think it needs to be crazily overbuilt, being that if it's only 12 to 18 inches tall, the water pressure is not immense. It's just the weight that I have to worry about. But I think once it gets fiberglass, it wouldn't be a problem. And um, that's something I kind of want to do in the future. But um, the future of this room, I might be, you know, like I said, getting rid of this system. Um, these tanks, I'll just drain down and actually physically move over and leave them how they are because I really love the growth in these tanks. Um, these mosaic guppies are doing good. And um, this tank over here has one buffalo head cichlid in it that had jumped before I put the lid on this. So there's one cichlid in here. He always hides under that Nubius in the back. If I need to get him out and put him in this tank, this tank has the other buffalo head cichlids in it. And um, I bought them as fry. They're all grown out now. So I think it's time to um, list these guys for sale. Um, I don't really plan on doing much with them. Um, I don't think I've updated you guys on these. These are mosaic fire tail guppies and they have dropped two batches of fry. Um, you can kind of see the size difference. I can get the glare out. The latest fry is far in the back against the matten filter. And then the first group of fry are these little bit bigger ones. So they're doing well. Um, these are orange shrimp um, neos. Um, they're doing okay. I originally or imported them, lost a bunch, and then these are the hardiest ones that have survived. And um, I do have a couple buried ones in there. These are my tequila sunrises. I've um, sold off most of them. This used to have, uh, shoot, probably at least 50 in there. Um, I'm down to a few left. All right. So yeah, so the import order, you know, I've learned a lot. I also have a dwarf, I don't think I mentioned this, dwarf um, aquarium lily bulbs in the back. They're starting to shoot out their runners, which is nice. Um, these are all available. And um, yeah, so most of these fish are available. There are some that won't be available until next week, but these cardinals are going to go super fast because they're doing really well. And um, I'm sorry that's been lackluster of updates. I've just been busy with all this. And, um, but yeah, so the import order started off really rough, but it's kind of come full circle now that I've got everything under control. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at now. But, you know, 2020, I'm gonna try to do even better and do bigger and better things this year so we'll see how this goes but thank you guys so much for watching i know this is going to be a really long video i hope you guys made it to the end and um check out 614fish.com you can always use the discount code youtube at checkout to save 20 percent and um until the next video thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it see you guys